Hey everybody, good morning. It is Abby from our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective, where we are on a mission to build a collective of global literacy coaches who are empowered with the skills in direct instruction, precision teaching, PACs, and self-directed education. Let's get started. Today is Friday, November 5th, 2021, and we are just entering into November, and in November, the moon is called the beaver moon, and today is actually the new moon, so there should be no moon out today um, that you should be able to see, but today is the day of the month on the new moon when we set our intentions. Uh, we have a full moon coming up on the 19th, which is actually going to be our last workshop for this season for the fall. So I look forward to continuing to share with you all and I'm excited to make an announcement about our uh, winter uh, workshop series, which will be starting in January. So today we're celebrating three things. It is Firewood Day, Play Monopoly Day, and World Tsunami Awareness Day. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later when we get into Full Bore Friday. I want to make sure that we acknowledge the land on which we are working and living. We are located in Tlingit Ani, the traditional homelands of the Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian people. Uh, and the place where we call home is in Nakati Bay, which is the home of the Tukchikan Kwan tribe. So Gumalashish how and for being here today. Thank you. As always, we synchronize our actions to the moon cycle. That means at the beginning of the month, when we are in the new moon phase, this is when we are setting our intentions. In the first quarter, uh, moon phase, we are exploring possibilities. At the full moon, we are making decisions and taking action. And on the third quarter moon phase, we are reflecting and resting and preparing for the next month to come. We employ a humanistic approach to life here at our Alaskan Oasis, and we are hoping to empower you to embrace the humanistic approach to life as well. I am a behavioral scientist, a creative writer, and a data-driven optimist. So today, our daily challenge for Full Bore Friday includes our fact of the week. Today on this day in history, in 1867, the delegates in Montgomery, Alabama uh, gathered to draft a new state constitution which was required by the Reconstruction Acts. Prior to the Reconstruction era, there was no Southern state that had a state financed public education system, even for white people. Um, so this is, was an interesting t uh, fact, factoid um, to learn, and I encourage you to click on the link for the um, article that's in the Zinn Project, um, This Day in History, to read more about what this historical moment meant and what it established in the South. As I mentioned, today we are celebrating and learning about Firewood Day, Play Monopoly Day, and World Tsunami Awareness Day. Many people across Alaska and many other places rely on firewood to heat their homes and um, empower and even create power. Uh, to learn more about the biomass industry, I would encourage you to follow the link to the alaskawoodenergy.com backslash biomass. It is also Play Monopoly Day. And for many people, playing Monopoly or the thought of playing Monopoly brings back some childhood memories. They could be good or they could be bad, um, but they're memories nonetheless from our childhood. So even if it's not Monopoly that you play today with your family, I would encourage you to find a game that everyone enjoys and play and laugh and have a good time. And finally, it's World Tsunami Awareness Day. And as a resident of a remotely located community, it's 
so this is something that we think about and uh, we've also we've actually had some tsunami warnings um, and in our small communities, we all have what's called a small community emergency response plan or a SCRP. And so if you live in a small community and you don't know about the SCRP, the response plan in your community, I would encourage you to reach out and learn what the plan is in your community so you are prepared in case of emergencies. As a reminder, as always, we are aim, our aim is to protect, uplift, inspire, and empower others. We listen for understanding when we have conversations and we take responsibility for any hurts we may cause. We are committed to being more impactful with our actions. At times, we get into situations where things might be getting a little bit out of control or off track, and that's when we pause to regather our thoughts or focus. If you're here live participating, you can drop, drop gems in the chat to save any thoughts. Or if you're watching, or if you're participating asynchronously, we love when you share the work that we do, add in those little quotes so people can um, capture uh, what your favorite part of our, our workshops were. If you're here participating live and it, there's opportunities to share your perspective, you are always welcome to pass. And as a reminder, we do record all of our workshops, but prior to publishing them, we do remove any identifying information from participants to protect their privacy. And finally, we are always committed to using sound verbal behavior, SVB, which is measured and deliberate speech where when we are mindful and thoughtful about the way that our messages are coming out and the way that they're being perceived. And this is opposed to noxious verbal behavior, which tends to end conversation. So my friends, are you ready to FBT? That means that you agree to for really listen, be radical and take action to improve your lives, the lives of your family and the lives of those in your community. Our values at our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective are to act with pride. Act with pride stands for acting committedly together with precision, respect, integrity, determination, and enthusiasm. Our mode of entre has a little song that goes with it. And so if you know it, sing along with me. We live resourcefully and sustainably. We embody peace, love, and joy. We effectively advocate for meaningful change and connection. We know who we are as a family. We are strong and self-assured. We are confident and motivated. We are happy, vibrant, and full of life. We totally love and accept ourselves. We are enough and all we can be. We are committed to taking action. We act with pride every day. Come join us. All right, everybody. Now let's get started. Our guiding questions today are one, how could we enrich our activities and social opportunities? And we're going to be using the ACT matrix to explore possibilities around this question. Our second guiding question is, what could we do to make activities and social opportunities more engaging? And we're going to be using the PACS tool, Shared Vision, to explore possibilities around this question. And then finally, we are going to be continuing our work on our 10 year story um, about where do we want to be in the next 10 years. Um, and we're working on uh, writing the story of our future selves. Before we get started with our guiding questions and our exercises for today, I want to circle back to the book I introduced at our last workshop which is called A Liberated Mind, How to Pivot Towards What Matters by Stephen Hayes. 
This book is an amazing resource for anyone who is looking to um, improve their psychological flexibility. If they feel like, if you feel like you're getting stuck on problems, you're coming, you're coming in, into contact with the same problems over and over, that generally means that there might be something going on with your psychological flexibility. And we all have challenges in this area. And the cool thing about this book is that there are, there's a lot of really, really good information. Most importantly, though, there are a number of exercises that you can do with yourself, you can do with your family, you could do with your uh, work partners. Um, and it's a really good way to practice these things together um, and develop some psychological flexibility together. And these skills really help us come together as a community and create positive nurturing relationships with ourselves, our families and others in our community. So last week we introduced the first pivot, which is diffusion. That means you're, you are noticing that you have negative thought patterns, or you get stuck on thoughts. And diffusion is, is this psychological flexibility pivot that helps us uncouple those negative thoughts and realize that thoughts are just thoughts and we don't have, they don't have to control what it is that we do. The second pivot in this, um, in the path, on the path towards psychological flexibility is called self, the art of perspective taking. And the exercise that I'm going to introduce to you all is, um, is one called um, I am. Okay, I am and I am not. So this is the first exercise in the um, in this second pivot section. So what I'm going to do is I am going to read this exercise to you. And while I'm going through, there's going to be some opportunities for you to respond. If you're, resp if you're here live, we will take some time to do this activity in person. If you are um, watching back this workshop, I encourage you to pause the video and take some time to do the exercises in the moment. So here we go. Exercise one in the second pivot. I am, I am not. A good place to start with this, um, to start is with this simple exercise. Following are three unfinished sentences. Take a sheet of paper and write them down. Now, complete the top two with one word answers that represent positive psychological attributes of yours. Don't put in mere descriptive attributes such as I am male or I am female. Use terms that refer to your most prized personal qualities. Reserve the last for the exact opposite. There, list in a single word as a or single word, a, pop, a personal attribute that you fear you have or think you have that is negative. So you're on your paper, you're going to have three sentence starters. Number one, I am blank, and you'll put in a one word positive attribute. Number two, I am blank, you'll put in another positive attribute. Number three, I am blank, and this is where you'll put in a negative attribute. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll move on with the exercise. Okay, so let's begin by reviewing the top two positive answers. I have a couple simple questions for you. Is this true all the time, everywhere, towards everyone, without exception? You are such a liar. What about the bottom one? Is it totally true everywhere? Would someone else say the same thing if they could watch you 24 seven? Now, another question. How many of these statements can you turn into a comparison with others? Try to do it with each one. If you wrote down, I am smart or I am kind, 
See if these statements link to the idea that you are smarter or kinder or dumber or so on. And at least um, that it, then at least some people, um, some other people. This isn't just your story. This is your story in comparison to others. No wonder we begin to feel so alone when we're inside our own ego. The beginning of a solution is to notice your fusion with these statements. Beginning with the first one and continuing through all three, change the period at the end of the sentence to a comma, and then write down these two words, or not. For example, I am smart, or not. Now read each sentence again slowly and watch what happens. Take your time. If you find your mind filling with negative thoughts as you do this, use your diffusion skills on them, saying to yourself, I am having the thought that. You may be able to sense something opening slightly, as if a little bit of air is coming into a room. You may feel that you somehow have more options about how you think about yourself. Don't try to hang on to that feeling. It will come and go. And don't get into an argument with yourself about which version is more accurate. The mental process we are cultivating here is reminding ourselves that we can refuse to buy one version of a story as compared to another. We're opening our minds to possibilities. See if you can notice that the sense of opening happens with both the positive statements and the negative one. Now, take the first sentence and cross out what you've written after I am. Who would you be without that content? Pause to consider the answer. Then do the same with each of the other sentences. What would it be like to just let all of that content go? This process raises a question. Who are you without all the stories and defenses? Who or what are you trying to protect? If you woke up one day, and all sentences like this were just sentences. They all had that open sense of blank or not. Would you still be you? If your mind replies, heck no, oh, then just take a moment and notice who is noticing that mind of yours. Aren't you noticing that mental reaction? Isn't the you that is noticing the deeper sense of you? As the final act in this little exercise, circle the two words repeated three times. I am, I am, I am. And consider them. What if the deeper sense of self we seek is closer to those two words alone? In crafting the story of our lives, we lose sight of this powerful alternative. Just being. There is one more step to this exercise, which helps us become more aware of when we tend to fall apart under the spell of our self stories. Ego based stories are not just distorted, they also tend to be too general. In actuality, we focus on different aspects of our self story in different circumstances. For example, when at home with our loved ones, we may focus on our view of ourselves as being caring. While at work, we might focus on our thought, our thoughts about being inept. Becoming aware of how our self story changes according to different situations helps us stay better connected with our transcendent self and therefore with our ability to choose among possibilities about how we will be. So now we're going to transform the I am blank statements 
by rewriting each one. First, instead of I am, write I feel or I think. For example, if you wrote I am loving, replace it with I feel loving. If you wrote I am smart, make it I think of myself as smart. Next, Qualify each statement by describing the situation in which you think or feel that way, including how your own behavior is involved using this phrasing. When this situation happens, I, your behavior, then how you think and feel. For example, when my wife was disagreeing with me, or sorry, when my wife is disagreeing with me and I take her perspective seriously, I feel loving. Or when I have a lot to do and I take time for self-care, I think of myself as smart. You can also write descriptions of the situations in which you do not feel loving or smart. For example, when I have a lot of work to do and I ignore my 12 year old son, I do not feel loving. This is far more useful form of self-description, guiding us about when and how we are not behaving in accordance with our authentic aspirations for ourselves. Keeping, pra keep practicing this exercise as you catch yourself um, judging yourself become increasingly more aware of their invitation into our overextended conceptualized self and how many other options you have. Just to notice and to carry them in other directions from a more transcendent self sense of self. I hope that you enjoyed that exercise and will take that and utilize it in your life. So now let's move on to our first guiding question. All right, friends, it's time for our first guiding question. How could we enrich our activities and social opportunities? We're going to be using the ACT matrix to explore possibilities and really set our intentions for around um, for this question. As a review, the ACT matrix is a four part um, series of questions that can be used in a group format to, um, to make shared decisions. We start out in this first quadrant by coming together and brainstorming and incorporating all of our ideas about priorities, values, and goals around the question. And then we come together and we share our perspectives about actions that could move us closer towards those priorities, values, and goals. Thirdly, we come together around the question about actions that we we might do or that we do do that move us away from our priorities, values, and goals. And then finally, we move into the final phase, which is to think about thoughts, feelings, and barriers that may come up, will come up, we predict will come up, um, that will get in the way of us um, reaching and moving towards our priorities, values, and goals. And these are what we consider to be indicators of a problem, things that we can notice that will help us um, identify when there's a problem and help us get back on track. So let's start here in the number one, which is priorities, values, and goals. And so the way that we do this is that everyone who is part of the group who is having this conversation that needs to make a decision would come around um, in, and gather together and would be given an opportunity to think to themselves and brainstorm and then share out their perspectives. 
So the question, as we're all coming together here, is how could we enrich our activities and social opportunities? We would give, we give everybody, we'll give everybody a few minutes to think about that. And if you're um, participating in this after the fact, go ahead and pause and give yourself a few minutes to think about um, your priorities, values, and goals around activities and social opportunities in your life. All right, so let's go ahead and add in our priorities, values, and goals. So um, we, we are going to identify three. This doesn't, you don't have to limit yourself. You don't have to limit the group to three, but for illustrative purposes, we are going to limit it here. Um, so the question is, how could we enrich our activities and social opportunities? And then we would be brainstorming and contributing our priorities, values, and goals around activities and social opportunities. Okay, so we value and we prioritize activities that are outdoors, together, um, adventuring. Our second priority value and goal is um, opportunity to learn from others. And then our third priority value and goal around activities and social opportunities is that they are inclusive of all ages and fun. Okay, so we came together as a group, we brainstormed, and then we summarized those into three priorities, values, and goals. We, we value being outdoors together and um, having adventures. We, we value um, providing opportunities to learn from others, and we are inclusive of all ages and fun. Okay, so then we will move on to question number two, which is what are actions we could take that would move us to closer towards our priorities, values, and goals? Uh, and again, we're going to uh, think about this for ourselves and brainstorm. We're going to share our perspectives, and then we're going to summarize it in our chart. And so we're going to, so again, you can pause, think for yourself. What are some actions that might move us towards these priorities, values, and goals? And then we'll summarize here. All right. Okay. So now, again, for illustrative purposes, we are going to include two actions per priority, value, and goal. So we're going to have six actions all together. So let's first start with outdoors together adventuring, okay? What are some actions that we could take that would move us closer to the goal of doing outdoor activities together that are, um, that are adventures? We could reach out to local businesses for, um, excursion opportunities, okay? We could, um, we could use the uh, U.S. Forest Service map to plan out adventures. And even the, in the U.S. Forest Service web, uh, website is a plethora of information that um, has uh, that can lead us to really cool opportunities for exploration and adventure. Okay, so now let's talk about the second one. What are some actions that we could do that would move us towards um, opportunities to learn from others? We could do a community survey of um, special skills and talents. Okay, and then we could create a shared calendar. 
of community-led classes. Awesome. Okay, number four. I mean, <laughs> sorry, number three, um, inclusive of all ages and fun. What are some actions that we could take to move us closer to those priorities, values, and goals? We could survey all interested parties and find commonalities. Excellent. And then what else could we do? We could um, get feedback after each activity to ensure alignment. This is a really good way. So doing a pre-survey, right, to get information, gather information from people in the community so you can come up with really good ideas. And then after we do these things, you know, these activity, activities and social opportunities, if we seek feedback, then we can continually shape our um, opportunities to be more in alignment of being inclusive of all ages and fun for all. All right, so now let us move on to question number three, which is what are some actions that we might take that would move us away from our priorities, values, and goals? So again, take some time to think about this for yourself and then, sh and then share out your answers and then we'll summarize here. All right, so let's talk about actions. What are some things that we might do that would move us away from doing outdoor adventures together, um, learning from each other, and including everybody in the fun opportunities? What are some things that we might do? Okay, so outdoors, adventuring together, what are things that might move us away from that? Um, <clears throat> We might uh, focus on how to summarize this. <laughs> um, we might focus on um, home based activities instead of outdoor adventures. Um, we might make excuses for not going outside. This is where that um, the adage from for school comes in very handy is that there's no bad weather, there's just bad gear. There's no excuse for not getting outside. Um, what about opportunities to learn from others? Okay. Um, we might just make a schedule without um, seeking input, right? So that means that we might be keeping our circle too close or we're only, you know, we're only allowing um, certain people, certain opportunities to do certain things. But if we open it up to all, we can learn more from more people and really tap into all those um, special skills and talents that people have. Okay, but that would be moving us away. We're just gonna make a schedule without seeking input. Okay, and opportunities to learn from others. What are some things that we might do that move us away from that? Um, is uh, not giving people support in developing classes, okay? There are a lot of people who have a lot of things to share, but they might not actually have experience teaching. That doesn't mean that they are not that they are not eligible then for leading a class. That just means that they need support, um, and it's and in order to provide more opportunities for shared learning, we might want to take into consideration doing some more supportive role activities to help people and empower them to 
to share their skills and talents in a way that is going to be meaningful for the most amount of people. All right, and then finally, inclusive of all ages and fun. What are some things that we might do that would move us away from that? We might um, schedule only <clears throat> adult or little kid activities. And we might rush in our planning and not consider the needs of others. And that would definitely move us away. All right, and then finally, my friends, we come to the thoughts, feelings, and barriers that would come up when we are moving away from our priorities, values, and goals, and what that might look, sound, and feel like. Um, and those are gonna be our indicators. So if we were, um, so we might be thinking things such as, we don't have time for fun activities. It's too gross and cold outside. Um, what other things might we be thinking or feeling? Um, I'd rather just stay home. Okay. What are some other things that we might be thinking and feeling? I'm the only one who wants to do anything. Okay. We might be also thinking, um, we don't have any fun ideas or something like, we don't have the right equipment. Okay, and those things might all be true, right? That might be how you're thinking and feeling, and those might be actual barriers, but then that gives us an opportunity to come together and collaboratively problem solve. How are we going to get back on track? How can we get to our priorities, values, and goals? So we are all doing things together and having more enriched activities and social opportunities for everyone. All right, now for our second guiding question. What could we do to make activities and social opportunities more engaging? So for this question, we are going to use the PAX tool shared vision to explore possibilities. And as a reminder, or for those of you who have not been here before, PAX tool shared vision is a way for us to come together and establish um, expectations of each other, of ourselves and others, to ensure that we're all working together in a way that is supportive and meaningful. So the way that this works is that we come together, we gather together, we have a question that we need to answer, we have a problem that we want to try to solve, and we want to get everybody's input. And the way that we structure this conversation is that we have everybody think about and contribute their ideas about what they would like to see, feel, hear, and do more of, and what they would like to see, feel, hear, and do less of. And this gives us an opportunity to ensure that everybody's voice is heard and their input is incorporated into the expectations. So let's go ahead and get started. There are a number, there are two ways that you can go about this. You can go um, singly, box by box, or you can do one section at a time. So the more section and then the less section. And so I encourage you to take a moment to reflect to yourself on the first question. What would you like to see, feel, hear, and do more of that would make activities and social opportunities more engaging? 
what would you hear, see, feel, and do more of if activities and social opportunities were more engaging? So take a moment, pause it if you need to, brainstorm, and then we'll summarize our input into the chart. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our input. As a reminder, we are focused on in working to ensure that the mores outweigh the less. So if we have three mores in a box, we would want one or two lessons. If we have seven mores, we want less than six or less uh, lessons um, to ensure that we're really focused on what we want to do, see, feel, and do more of, see, feel, hear, and do more of, as opposed to kind of on the negative side. And many times what you'll find is the things that you want to see, hear, feel, and do less of can be flipped into things that you want to see, feel, hear, and do more of. All right, so let's take a pause and then we will summarize. Awesome. Okay, so let's get her done. So if activities were more, if activities and social opportunities were more engaging, what would we see more of? We would see more people, we would see people together. We would see people laughing. Or that would be something we would hear. We would hear, we would see, might see people smiling. Um, we might see people actively, <clears throat> actively engaged. We might see people um, doing, uh, we might see people doing fun activities. Um, and we might see people things were engaging, uh, sticking to it for longer periods of time. And we might see people encouraging each other. Okay. And if our activities and social opportunities were more engaging, how would that make us feel? I think we would feel more connected we would feel more engaged. We would feel more supported. We would feel more um, uh, respected. We would feel more fulfilled. And we would feel more um, excited. And what might we hear if, think, if our social activities and opportunities were more engaging? We might hear more laughter. We might hear more chatter. Oops. We might hear more um, asking questions. We might hear more offering suggestions because people are feeling comfortable. We might hear more, um, more gratitude. And we might hear more, um, what would we hear more of? We would hear more, um, working, I guess, doing things. We'll call that movement. We'd hear more movement. All right. So finally, in this last box, we um, incorporate what we would be doing more of if things were, um, if activities and social opportunities were engaging. Um, we might be doing more activities. Okay. We might be doing more adventuring. You might be doing more things that are out of our zones of comfort. 
we might be doing more um, gathering. We might be doing more playing. And we might be doing more arts and crafts. Awesome. Okay. So then our next step is to think to ourselves, brainstorm silently about the things that we would see, feel, hear, and do less of, or things that we want to see, feel, hear, and do less of in order to make our activities and social opportunities more engaging. So let's take a few minutes to think to ourselves and then we'll share out and then we'll summarize on our chart. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with what we want to see, feel, hear, and do less of. Um, that is going to demonstrate that our activities and social opportunities are more engaging. What would we see less of if our activities and social opportunities were more engaging? We would see less wandering. We would see less um, disengagement, disengagement, and we would see less, um, uh, isolation. And we're going to keep it to three and eighth one. Again, we want to make sure that our lesses are always less than our mores because we are focusing on the positive and things that we can do. Um, and the good, we're focusing on the good stuff. What do we want to feel less of that would make us real know that our activities and social opportunities are more engaging? We would feel less disconnected. You can see that's the opposite of the first one, connected. We would feel less uh, bored and we would feel less forced or coerced, right? Uh, this is not forced family fun. <laughs> we are we are trying to find things and do things that are um, the opposite of that. Choosing to, choosing to engage. Awesome. Okay. So what would we hear less of? We would hear less complaining. Absolutely. We would hear less... Um, arguing, and we would hear less snoring. Boring. If it's not boring, we're not snoring. Or if it's too boring, we will hear snoring. All right. And finally, what would we be doing less of if our activities and social opportunities were more engaging? We would be doing less uh, alone time, we would be doing less um, uh, boring stuff, and we would be doing less um, avoidance. Okay. Because if things are fun and engaging, we are not, we are less likely to be avoiding them. All right, so as you can see, this tool is a really cool way for us to come together and have a robust conversation about our expectations of ourselves each and each other. And it helps set the stage for what we, um, what we want to have happen. And it allows us to you know, share those things in a way that makes it more likely that we're going to do them. And everybody feels heard and seen and appreciated and incorporated into the plan. <laughs> All right, folks, it's time for our final question of the day. And that is, where do we want to be in 10 years? So that would be in 2031. 
where do we want to be? And the cool thing about this question is that you can revisit this all the time and come back to this story of your future self. And this is actually one of the tools that is, um, that is utilized in a liberated mind in developing psychological flexibility. And it gives us a way to really think about who we want to be. Um, and if we start out at the 10 year mark, who we want to be in 10 years and work our way back from there, it can help really create a guide post um, that allows us to envision our future selves in a way that will keep us moving towards our ultimate goal for our ultimate destination, right? So we're going to take a moment. We've, we've talked about, we've kind of uh, brainstormed together what we're going to do 10 years, um, what you're going to do in five years, what you're going to do in three years. So now we're on to the fourth part, which is in one year, I will dot, 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 fill in the blank. So let's go ahead and give ourselves about three minutes to free think and write. Um, if you feel more comfortable speaking, you can record yourself. If you feel more comfortable writing, you can handwrite. If you feel more comfortable typing, you can type. If you feel more comfortable doing speech to text, do speech to text. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable, if you feel most comfortable just sitting and thinking and not doing any writing at all, more power to you, friend. Um, but I do want us to take the next three minutes to reflect upon this question and think about what we would what we would write if we were writing our stories at this moment. In one year, I will. And begin. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to really process through this question. These can be heavy things to think about uh, because the future is never certain. But what I do know, and as I have been on my journey of developing my own personal psychological flexibility, particularly over the past five years, I have utilized this tool to help me remain in alignment with my priorities, values, and goals. And I hope that this exercise will do the same for you. All right, my friends, we have come to the very end of our time together. I thank you for coming and sharing your perspectives and actively participating and thinking deeply about how you could use these tools in your own life to really amplify your homeschool experience, to amplify the, um, the way that you show up in this world. I'm really excited to continue working with you and hearing your stories of growth and development as an individual and as a family and as a community. Our invitations to you are to join our Alaskan Oasis Homeschool Collective if you have not already. We, have our, we hold our weekly workshops. Um, that is $100 per term, $270 for a full year. We provide weekly family coaching. We do an hour of coaching per week, and we, um, and we are charging $750 for anywhere between 10 and 15 hours of coaching, depending on what is most meaningful to you and your family. We also provide daily direct instruction Monday through Thursday for one hour. That is available for $1,500 for 40 to 60 hours of direct instruction. Um, and we are always seeking um, contributions to our GoFundMe to support our Alaska Oasis and uh, open up the ability for us to purchase the direct instruction curriculum and testing kits that we need to provide the training and services to the families that we serve. And as always, please like, comment, and share on socials. We are on Facebook, Cruising with Babs. We're also on Facebook with Alaskan Oasis. We're on Instagram, our Alaskan Oasis, and on TikTok at Mr. Mistra, the Mysterious Elf. Thank you for joining us. And I look forward to you joining us for the final two workshops of the 
fall season, which are happening next Friday, the 12th, and the following Friday, the 19th, which is the full moon. And so that is going to be really fun. And I told you that I was going to make an announcement about our winter workshop series. And that is going to be focused. The, the title of the series is called Charting Our Hearts. And that is going to be focused on learning together about direct instruction and precision teaching and how it can be applied to amplify your child's uh, uh, progress and their accomplishment within their homeschool program. But even more cool than that, these tools and these skills can be applied to your own learning as an adult. These are not uh, these are not kids' toys, direct instruction, precision teaching. These tools are for anyone and everyone. And I promise you, even though those two phrases sound very scary and a little boring, I promise you that we are going to have fun and we're going to show you how empowering it can be to go from you know, questioning yourself and not being sure if you're doing the right thing to support your children and to learn for yourself and giving you some tools that are going to help you take it to a next level. So you have more time for more fun, more social activities. That is what our mission is. Get the, get the important stuff done so we can get to the good stuff. I love you all. I thank you all. I appreciate you. And I will see you next time.